this is Thorin for SK Gaming, back with another edition of Fresh Pots for Counter Strike. Today we're going to take a look at a game between Frag Executors and SK Gaming. This series was the semi final of the IEM5 World Championship. Frag Executors went on to go to the final and face Navi. SK had to bow out and play against MTW in the third place decider. And in this series, we're going to look at the deciding map, which was Dust 2. Now, to set the tone of what, what this series was like before it began, SK kind of came in as the probably the biggest surprise to that point of the tournament because they'd won Group B, which had been the stacked group. It had Lions, it had Fnatic, even the teams who were at the bottom of the group, you know, the Red Code, um, Evil Geniuses. People expected a lot from this group. Nobody was really sure who was going to come out at the very top. SK won the group totally, they won three games, they drew two, so they went undefeated. Meanwhile, over in Group A, everyone had kind of decided, okay, the battle for the top spot there is going to be between MTW and FX, and they'd had such a close series at the European Championships in that semi-final that when FX got crushed by MTW on Inferno, it actually kind of left people feeling like, okay, MTW's probably got the upper hand there, FX maybe isn't as strong as we thought before. So it made this semi-final really interesting because on one hand you could feel like, okay, FX in the quarterfinals, they managed to get past Fnatic. They did it in impressive fashion, so maybe they're on their peak form. But at the same time, this new SK team, no one quite knew what to expect from their players. Their players had gelled to that point in all the games they needed to. And the series, it, it began pretty much as you'd expect. FX got a nice win on train. They've always been a very good train team. It had been 16 to 10, but it hadn't really have been that close a game. It's one where they went up really big as CT, so it was always kind of inevitable they were going to win. SK came right back, and on their best map of the tournament, Nuke, they managed to get a 16 to 9 win. So it led us into this third map. And in the third map, Dust 2. Dust 2 was the same game where FX had gone 16 14 against uh, Fnatic. And it taken all those crazy rounds from Neo to win that map. So at this point, you, you really could... It was almost like a coin flip. You had no idea who was going to come out on top. And then what we're going to see in this game is not only how did FX win this close game, which also was 16-14, very dramatic, but we're also going to take a look at the performance of Cuban. Because in this game, he really separated himself from everyone else in the server. He had a great statistical game. He had a very good game in terms of clutch plays and kind of plays at exactly the right time when his team had to get that particular kill, otherwise they lose the game. We're going to start out here on the fourth round of the terrorist side. FX, the game's been going fine for them so far, they're 3-0 up. They won the pistol round fairly easily. And what you're going to see on this round is, first of all, you're going to get a nice chance to see FX, one of FX's basic kind of default setups. The way they have Taz head over towards B, they have uh, one of their AWPers, usually Pasha or Neo, right down that middle suicide part where you jump straight down and go along. They bring it back. If they don't spot anyone long, they don't spot anyone coming towards aggressively to be tunnels. Then instead they start to head long and uh, catwalk. And you'll see here that the SK players are failing fairly aggressively. Now Roban's going to get a pick here. And then despite SK getting that initial kill, you'll see how the how the FX attack kind of swarms in and then big kills from Cuban is what decides this particular round. And this actually kind of sets the tone for what would later on be the kind of attacks that you'd see from the two teams because... Both teams heavily targeted the catwalk on this game, and in particular FX, they got nearly all of their success by sending people catwalk. So I think winning this round, to some degree, maybe threw off some of the uh, the SK players. You see, what had initially looked like a good round there for SK, from the kind of positions that they had, immediately turned into a great round for FX. You can't really blame Cuban too much for that grenade. Obviously, I mean, it wasn't great communication. But you couldn't really have expected that Neo was that low health and that he dropped down there. Bearing in mind, we don't know what they said to each other. And then he wins the 1v1 quite nicely there. 
even though you have to kind of feel a bit bad for face that he's spraying so much you can even hear the bullets hitting there and he still doesn't get the kill well what we're going to do now is first things first let's go take a look at things from the from cuban's point of view so cuban's sneaking along down this long area you remember at this point we still haven't roban still hasn't taken that op shot which kind of sparked the whole round that's when the fx players swarm after that shot and you remember you could see the sk players at catwalk had to focus all of their attention over there to spray because there's this they were just getting bombarded at that corner so there we go great timing by cuban to get the first kill second kill is pretty easy then he kind of makes a mistake he kills his teammate neo this kill is really good i mean that's just an excellent bit of tapping there and then it looks like, you know, they're in a 2v1. It looks like it should be an elementary round here with the amount of health that these FX guys have got. But that's a big mistake to get killed like that. And then this is just a great kill. Obviously unfortunate for Face, but then again, if you think about it, as Face comes around that corner, he doesn't actually know exactly where Cuban's going to be because the person he's just killed is the only one that he's actually seen. He doesn't know that Cuban's going to be at that particular spot. Sometimes you expect them to be to the left if they're going to surprise you. They're going to be to the right, maybe even above you on the boxes. So you're kind of having to just scout each area quickly. So if you're face, you probably have to fire immediately there like he did and just hope that you spray him down. Cuban, obviously, I mean, half his health does get taken away, but he gets the kill marginally comfortably, let's say. But a great bit of skill. I mean, I think probably the two biggest kills there are the kill he gets onto Roban. As Roban switches his attention, he just gets to kill him in the back. Then he gets that free kill onto Dennis, which, yeah, easy enough. But then that, that third kill, the one on Forrest, as Forrest peeks out, that piece of tapping was excellent. In that kind of position, if you panic and you spray, maybe you get him like 20, 25% of the time, but it's Forrest, so you don't want to let him be peeking out and bursting against you when he knows your position. So that was a crucial kill by, by Cuban, and really the first of many huge players and huge rounds that you would have in this game. We're going to move now to the 27th round of the game. FX are on CT and they're in big, big trouble. The way the game had gone so far, the flow, had been that in the first half, it had ended 9-6 to FX on their T side, but actually they'd really let the game slip and SK had really come on strong because FX at one point had been 6-0 up, then they'd been 8-1 up, and then they'd let that slide all the way to 8-6, and then they'd grab the last round to make it 9-6. So nine rounds as terrorist. That will get you by in a game, but that means you're going to have to come up with a couple of big plays on CT to ensure that you get that game, because otherwise you let the other terrorists go on their T side, they get a momentum going, they get a roll going, and all of a sudden you're fighting against them and you're fighting against the money, which is exactly what you're going to see in the, in the last part of this game here. Now on this particular round, FX really hasn't got any clue of what what they need to do cohesively to make their CT side work. SK's been on a complete run. I mean, for FX had, for FX rather, had begun by winning the pistol round, then they'd gotten the next decor, but then after that, it'd been all SK pretty much. SK had torn off six rounds in a row to make the game overall 12 to 11 to SK. Then FX had won a round to make it 12 12, but then SK go on, go on another run. They win two more rounds. It's 14 to 12 for SK, and SK are on T side here on Dust 2. So the crucial thing about this particular round is that this is the kind of point where not only are the terrorists very confident because they're flowing, every attack seems to work, but as CT, every gun you lose, every time you buy an AWP and you lose it, every time you get in a situation where you have to save with less than three guns, you're really kind of gambling against your future rounds. It's going to be very difficult to even economically stay on par with the flashes, the, the diffuse kits. So you're going to see what a huge round this is and a huge play again from Cuban. Unfortunately, we don't have his POV for the second half, but you'll see anyway what a great play he has, what a great series of plays rather on this round that you'll you'll see unfold. What's crucial to, to bear in mind as we see this attack play take place now is that so far in the game, SK's attacks had nearly all been on the A site. It had all been a mixture of catwalk, a mixture of split A's, a mixture of fast cat, and then one slow around the back to back stab at A. So there'd be no reason for the FX players to feel like there was an imminent attack coming on here at B. 
Cuban's in kind of the famous closet spot, as the Americans call it. He puts a very nice flash in there. I mean, that's just brilliant, the way that they lined up there. Third one, amazing spray again. Just holds his position. He knows there's one there, it's Roban. Keeps holding in case he's going to push out. We're getting down to less than a minute on the clock now. What you're going to see next when he gets his next kill, Cuban, is kind of the kind of uh, the kind of pacing of the game and the fact that Cuban was really keyed into it. Because what? Look at the timing in which he chooses to come out now, and then he gets the last kill of the round to win it. I mean, the entire round there, he's sat just holding that A area. He hears Neo get the kill in the A site. So obviously, I mean, logical process. They're probably going to A now because the time's getting down. So it'd be difficult for someone to get back from A over to B. In fact, it would pretty much be impossible. So he starts to move out. But then the, you can call it luck. You can call it happenstance. But in, in reality, when you're a good player, when you're on top of your game, when the game is flowing in your mind, you're kind of following your intuition. You make these correct decisions. You put yourself in good positions over and over where you can win a round. You can get a kill for your team. That's what you saw from Cuban there. What we'll do now is we'll take a look at SK's point of view from that whole attack and how they kind of pushed into the site, the way they were trying to attack based on the rounds before, and what kind of went wrong for them and what the other decisions they maybe could have made on that particular round. So we'll start out. Robin has his AWP. He's spotting middle. Like I said, SK to this point, all the su successful attacks, and they'd had a lot, had been at A, had been heavy pushes on catwalk, controlling that area, locking it off. And now look, they've got four men just slowly lining up towards B here. There is a smoke down, but there's no particular reason to know that everyone's going to rush in just yet. Now watch as they come out. You'll see, look, those two... Everything goes wrong there with the way that attack went. The first guy in... He's looking pretty much nowhere. Then the two, second guy comes out. They're lined up. They can't really have known that they would be lined up because Cuban did step out to kill them. But then that third kill... Look, there's Robin and Get Right still alive here. Get Right's going to hold here. But that third kill, the guy really needed to quickly kill that guy who was inside the site. Then at least his men could have moved up and into the site. Whereas instead, you come out of that tunnels and you're either having to shoot the guy in the site or the guy doors... So you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, and instead Roman has to re retreat. He can't go into B. And we'll see here. Get right in a decent position, but then he, he gets killed because Cuban's in a better position, and he just happens to be looking at perfectly the right time. So the real problems for SK there were, first of all, they kind of got stuck between slowly walking into the site together. The first two guys go in, but then the second two are kind of hesitant for reasons of seeing the opponents. The next mistake tactically is that because they can't get into the site, sometimes when you're attacking B, it doesn't matter if you lose men because of the way you can play the site's angles once you have the bomb down. As long as you sacrifice them for the sake of getting into the site and taking up those dominant positions. But by getting in and losing men, even though they're in a 2v2 there, they put themselves in a difficult situation. And Neo guessed correctly to just go straight to long A instead of going up middle or up the catwalk. So he gets his kill, then get right. There's nothing really he can do there. So by then, the, the round's pretty much completely fractured. But you can see how SK's timing was just a little bit off. Or perhaps the fact that they hadn't attacked B like that, except on one of the Ecos. The fact that they'd never attacked when FX had had their full guns there. They never got a chance to see how they set up. Never got a chance to see which angles do we need to look at first. Where do we need to throw that first flashbang? And that's another key of Counter-Strike that sometimes gets lost. Sometimes when you're playing on terrorist side, you're trying to set up patterns in your mind and in the opponent's mind. So maybe you're going to do a couple of attacks on B and maybe only one out of the two work. But by setting up the rhythm of when you're going to throw your flashes, when you're going to throw your smokes, in which order your men are going to come out and where they're going to be looking, you can actually affect how the CTs are going to position themselves in future rounds. So sometimes you pay your dues, you get a couple of losses and wins early on in a site but you do it so that later on you've got them set up so that then you can kind of put in the knockout punch and you can get that round that you really need when you need to go to the b site later and we saw from sk there almost the success hurt them in a little bit because of choosing to switch over to the a site like that 
the last round that we're going to take a look at in this edition is the 28th round, the very next round from the one we just saw. And if you remember, on the last round, the 27th, it had been 12 to 14 before the round had started. SK had torn off this huge amount of terrorist rounds. FX were in a really tricky situation. They basically had to win those next rounds, otherwise they'd be in very deep money problems. And once more, they'd have had to completely win out the half. Now, they won that round, thanks to Cuban's play. So they got their game to 13-14. Um, and on this round, they get to game to 14-14. And this is the pivotal round of the whole series and the map. Because if they lose this particular round, even the FX players themselves would admit that SK would have won the game. SK would have won the series. It would have been SK in the final playing against Navi. And if you remember, some of you might have seen the footage of the FX players after they won this game. And they were literally in tears. They were completely emotionally drained. And that's because they'd had this huge lead in the game. They'd had these leads. They'd get had the leads taken away from them. They'd seen that lead fall apart. It's the pivotal map. They're in these do or die situations where a CT if you make one mistake you step to the wrong area at one particular point of time the terrorists completely can eviscerate that site your money screwed for the rest of the game I mean basically you're on a knife edge the whole time and the, the, the intensity when you're in that type of a game is huge that even if you win it can feel like you don't even necessarily feel the joy of winning you just feel the the relief of not losing in such a, a pressure scenario so we're going to see from sk here exactly how that round went down and then the crucial crucial play and this time it isn't necessarily cuban at the beginning of the round but we know that he comes through because it, there's a very famous 1v1 he takes place in, in this round so we'll see here sk is switched back to a site because that b site attack we saw last round basically completely failed they didn't get any of the they didn't even get the first few steps done in the right order or executed properly to give themselves a chance but they'd had so much success at a just switch back over to a go to what you know and the way they'd been attacking a it always been heavily pushing men towards the catwalk even if they did send someone to long it tended to be someone for a backstab so what you're going to see is they push in here and lord is in one of the most famous hiding spaces that you're ever going to have on this site and this is one of those scenarios where every other round maybe you check that spot but this one time you don't and look he gets two kills. The third kill is just marvellous. Even gets bullets onto the last guy. Roban manages to get that kill onto him, which is crucial. Now it's a 1v1 between Cuban and Roban. Cuban's just hanging around. He's just tapping, tapping. Roban's shooting him through there. Keeps moving forwards. He gets... I mean, from Cuban's point of view, it's a little bit lucky, obviously. He has to hope that Roban doesn't hit him through the wall. He has to... I mean, really, he's hoping that he kills him earlier than that. I'm sure it's a surprise to him that even that he's not hitting those bullets when he pushes out towards the corner. But he manages to win the round. He wins this very clutch 1v1, and that actually wins his team that round, and then gives them a chance, which they then take, take opportunity of, and they go on to win the whole game. But now let's take a look at it from the point of view of the SK players, in particular Robin at the end there. Let's take a look at the whole round from uh, Roban's POV here. So you can see there, Forrest's got the first kill. If you remember, he killed Neo at the corner behind the little steps where the CT always hides. So this is when the other SK players are heading up the catwalk and they're, they're going to get killed. Three of them are going to get killed by Lord when he peeks out from that spot. So you'll see here how Roban plays it and how obviously he makes some mistakes and some bad decisions later on in the round, but he also actually is crucial for even getting SK into that position to have the chance at the round. So look, first of all, he pe peeks out. He kills the the AWPA, which is crucial to even giving his chance to, team a chance to get into the site. He doesn't get a chance to kill that first guy, which is where he really wants to do damage. But he kills Taz. Now, look, he falls down, misses the first shot, overshoots on there. Now, it's easy to say, yeah, he whiffed some shots, he missed some shots. I think people are often a little bit too critical of AWPers because of the fact it is such a hit-or-miss gun. But I think if you kind of break it down there into how likely each shot was. Now, first of all, if he'd have shot really quickly on the guy who was inside the site where you can just see his head over the top of the little wall, his problem there is he thinks for maybe half a second too long and in doing so he has to fight another guy who I, who he actually no scopes right in front of him great kill but the problem was if he'd have just shot a little bit earlier he could have actually killed that guy within the site who I think was Cuban now then 
Cuban pushes up, drops down. He, he hears that he's dropped down behind that wall. And then if you remember the way he took that shot, the problem is the first shot is actually, I think, where he has the best chance to kill him. In the, or, do, or put his damage down a lot, or rather do a lot of damage to him. And the problem there is that instead of shooting into the wall on that particular shot, he tries to shoot the corner of Cuban's elbow, which is peeking out, and he misses. Then he tries to shoot into the wall, but then he shoots too deep a position, whereas Cuban's actually towards the edge of the wall. Then Cuban pushes out and he kind of panics a little bit and shoots the edge of the wall. At that point, when Cuban kills him, I think it's fair enough. You, you can't really be expected to... When you're shooting op shots one after another like that, you can not really make use of the scope. And as a result, it becomes a lot more difficult to actually hit the shot. So to put a short summary on things... FX looked like they had the game under lock on the first part of the first half. Then SK get a little comeback. The game's kind of in, in even territory again. FX get the nice start, but then SK completely take over the game. They're running rounds off. They're getting all the attacks in. Everything's flowing. But then FX, their hero Cuban comes up. There's some enormous plays, some brilliant individual plays. We saw that round by Lord. We saw the one-on-one -on -one by Cuban. We saw his four kill in the uh, in the B site. These huge kills really were what what made the difference for FX. FX very much very well could have lost this game, and FX SK rather very well could have won this game. But a, a few small errors by SK and some really big clutch plays by FX were what in the end I think actually decided the game.